Welcome to the Woodpreneur Podcast, the number one podcast for the business and marketing side of the lumber, woodworking, hardwood flooring, and sawmill industry. I'm your host, Steve from Acres of Timber. Each week, we feature various wood business owners and entrepreneurs from around the globe. We share their stories, paths, insights, so that you can network, learn, and grow your own wood business. Thank you so much for listening. Now enjoy the episode. The Woodpreneur Podcast is proudly sponsored by Acres CRM. Acres CRM is the wood industry's only customer relationship management software dedicated to helping you automate your sales and marketing so that you can focus on serving your customers and growing your business. You can visit acresoftimber.com to learn more and to schedule a demo. Once again, hey, that's acresoftimber.com. Welcome acres to a brand of new episode com. of the Woodpreneur Podcast. It's your host, Steve. Today's guest is Jacob Denel from Bearded Ox. How you doing, Jacob? Doing great, buddy. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to have you on. Uh, so tell everybody about Bearded Ox. Uh, where were you? What part of the world are you in? And how'd you guys get started? <sighs> Jeez, that's the story. Uh, well, we're in Lethbridge, Alberta. So um, right above Montana. Um, we're about an hour away from the border, an hour's drive. Um, I got doing this because uh, I was uh, had another company. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur for about 14 years and um, did that and it was successful and I was making good money and all that was great. And a uh, little piece of my soul died every day. So I decided I got to try to do something different. Uh, so I went and uh, did a lifelong dream. I went and got my commercial helicopter pilot's license and uh, I was going to start a helicopter company. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I need to do something to make money because you can't just uh, fire up a helicopter company the next day. So I told my wife, I said, you know, I'll be a pretty grumpy guy if I got to keep doing what I'm doing. So why don't we start another company? Um, and she was like, sure thing, let's go. Uh, and I started doing some research. And um, at the same time, me and a friend of mine were working at all the business plan for the helicopter company and trying to make that go. And then uh, uh, I realized to get into what I wanted to do, there was no middle ground. It was spend, you know, 12,000 bucks, get a small mill, uh, put it in my backyard, do it on the weekends kind of thing, um, or jump all the way in. So, and I'm not a halfway kind of guy. So we jumped all the way in. That's awesome. And how long ago is that? Uh, it's four years now. And then, uh, so we started this, started working at it, uh, building this up. Uh, and then locally here where I was going to start a helicopter company, uh, they had a massive forest fire. Uh, and I was going to fly primary, uh, primarily heli tourism in the summertime. Uh, and so that happened. And then we had COVID. Uh, so if, uh, and our restrictions up here in Canada are, uh, not quite like the uh, land of the free and home of the brave. Uh, so you guys are pretty strict up there. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what happens when you have a tyrant in the office, but let's not get started on that. So um, we, uh, yeah, if we would have started that company, I would have been exceptionally bankrupt by now because it would have just been train wreck. So <laughs> things happen this, for a reason, this, right? Yeah. This wood life is, uh, is pretty good and it's uh, been great for us. What, uh, tell me about your products and services. What do you do? Uh, we're from raw log to finished finish product. So we cut and mill and kiln dry all of our own lumber. We sell and retail that in, in all kinds of dimensional and live edge. Um, I think we probably have one of the largest selections of kiln dried live edge in, in Alberta in my province. Um, there's some uh, guys. I gotta, I gotta hook you up with somebody then. Okay, yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah. And so uh, there is, you know, another company that's a couple hours north of me and they're really big in this and they got a big name and they got, you know, hundreds of thousands of uh, followers and stuff like that. And I always thought they would be monstrous. And then I went there a couple of years ago and I was like, wow, I've got like 500% of their inventory, you know, we're like, so we usually have 250 or more kiln dried full size slabs and then another five or 6,000 board feet of random odds and sods or charcuterie board stock or whatever. So, and it's all urban salvage. So it's all, uh, I worked with a good buddy of mine. Uh, he's an arborist in the area. And when I went to start the company, I phoned him and he's a bit of a, 
uh, extreme athlete. So he was down, I don't know, squirrel suit flying somewhere in California or something like that. And I said, buddy, this is what I want to do. And he said, that's great. I got endless amount of trees for you, but uh, no one ever comes and takes them. Like they, they say they want the lumber and then it just sits there and then it turns into a problem for me. And I said, okay, well, what if I got a couple acre lot and I just took everything you cut down? And he said, that work. So now I don't even, I don't go out and get them or anything. He loads them in his picker truck. I've got a whole yard set up, uh, organized by species. He backs in, cranes them off, and that's it. What uh, What's the dominant species up in uh, Alberta? Uh, we get about a dozen. Um, there's uh, cottonwoods and poplar. That's the same genus. We get uh, lots of green ash, birch, uh, elm, which I call the walnut of the prairies. Uh, so we get that, um, uh, apple, cherry, uh, Russian olive, Siberian elm, lots of random fruit trees that, you know, folks planted on their farm 100 years ago, right? And they're coming out. So stuff like that. I mean, it's it's a, a decent variety. We get some fur if I'm pulling from them, but uh, normally I'm about 50 kilometers from our hometown, which is uh, uh, mostly just prairies. So we're right close to the mountains, but not in them, so... That's cool. And what do you, uh, what's been a big challenge for you uh, in building this? Oh, well, first is why did you pick this particular model as opposed to anything else? And what has been a challenge with this model? Um, yeah, the challenge was the all or nothing. So uh, I had went back to the same banking institution that I used with all my other uh entrepreneurial adventures and I had a great working relationship with them and I said hey I think I'm going to start another company and they said um, uh, my account manager said cool how much do you need and I said oh I'm thinking 150 or something like that and he said well why not more because uh, we got great credit we pay our bills so he didn't care he just said tell me the amount and we'll get you going which is nice uh, so I started calculating and again figuring out what it would take to do it without uh, putting our foot on the brake and it was just north of a quarter million so uh, I took the loan went out bought all the gear and uh, in that loan I had uh, maybe enough to for like four months operating and uh, that was it so it's pretty lean and uh, me and a buddy I played hockey with in university uh uh, he came to work for me and uh, we just started buying and hooking up machinery and milling trees. So that was it because we went from absolutely nothing to full bore and no client list, no prospects, wow. no nothing. So it was a bit of a feel the dreams thing, you know, if we build it and hopefully they'll come. So how, how did you get the word out in the beginning? Uh I mean, I live, it's, it's a, it's the third biggest city in Alberta, but that's not saying much. I think we got 105,000 people. So it's not exactly a monster thing. So it's, it's fairly uh, hyper local uh, environment for commerce. Uh, people are pretty loyal to who's around. Um, and so I knew that we'd have that on our side. I also know that uh, we don't stop growing. We have the largest per capita student population in Canada. So between the university and the college, uh, we're like an extra 20% of our city just in students. Uh, and it's what city are you in? It's called Lethbridge. Okay. So they got, I think it's 20,000 students between the two and, uh, you know, we're 100,000 population. So, uh, and, and a decent amount of those guys, they're moving from all over the place. They come here. It's a beautiful city. It's nice. It's gorgeous. And they go, wow, why don't I stay? So our local housing market never stops. Uh, and then the, you know, you've got young professionals coming into their career, buying their first home. And I knew we had that strong market. I talked to a local lumber store here and I said, Hey, you know, if I go do this, are you interested in carrying some of my products? He said, yes. Uh, I actually ended up never putting a piece in this building, but that was something that gave me confidence that at least there was a market for it. So you looked at the market that you're in you saw that there was there and then in order for you to get the word out you just started telling people what you were doing uh, telling people you know we did uh like google advertising and that kind of stuff sort of grassroots uh assault uh pump some money in there um 
didn't really start with Facebook or Instagram for a, a while. Um, mm-hmm. And it's truthfully a hundred percent a weak spot in my uh, day-to-day life. So uh, I've tried to hire people to do it. Um, it just came off sounding very disingenuous or they didn't know enough about what they were talking about. So it was hard enough like to portray the actual story I wanted to tell uh, yeah. through someone else's mouth. So so we've, we've been hit or miss. Like I, I used to post every day for a while and that was mostly because I had a couple thousand photos and stuff I needed to get out there. And I still have so many that I've never seen the light of day of products that we've made or, or custom furniture and all that jazz. So, yeah. So in terms of uh, getting a word out is like word of mouth, some Google advertisement. Um, and I'm, I'm sure just a lot of grit and hustle, right? Yeah, man. Like uh, the first, you know, two years, I mean, I'm not telling you it was better roses. She was, she was tough slugging. So we, uh, we pulled that thing off the, off the runway a few times. I thought, uh Oh, you know, this could be it. Uh, but it's when you got no other option, then you just, uh, you know, I got a wife and kids. And so it's just, you show up to work and you make stuff and you try to try to hustle. So did, did you, did you focus on, uh, kiln dried lumber or finished products at first uh at first it was just lumber yeah like we um i got i got a lot of carpentry experience and and stuff like that and so uh but it was mostly we didn't have any wood to make stuff with so we started with (laughs) cutting and drying all the lumber uh, and getting everything set up we made our own kiln and and did all this stuff and uh it took a while to get rolling um, but then once we had some stock, then I built a dining table and I did this and I did that. So, and then it started to just grow from there. Um, we did, um, lots of stuff in, uh, in, a, of some custom homes, uh, really crazy stuff, like took half of a maple burrow log and cut it in half and dried it. And then I hand carved out a sink in it. And so the whole vanity was a massive log and then the sink carved right into the center of it. And we started to do just really fun stuff like that. And that got out, other builders saw it and we started to pick up some work. And when it was just me and my buddy, you know, your overhead's not that terrible. So, you know, a few custom pieces a month is enough to pay the bills. How big are you guys right now? Oh, we are, uh, there's five, I'm looking for more guys. So, Hey, if you want to move to Lethbridge, Hey, come on now, let's go. <laughs> let's uh, go. I need a, I need a 3d designer and a CAD cab for running the CNC. And I take another surgeon on the tools for carpentry, but we got five, five guys right now. Uh, so I need at least one more five full time. Yeah. That's great. man. um, and so how did you transition from, uh, the lumber to the more finished products. And I, right now, like, what are you, are you half lumber, half finished products? Or are you just more finished? We are, yeah, we're also an epoxy distributor. So uh, man, that's been uh, over a couple of years now. Um, I, 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 we pour about 6,000 liters a year um, in house. Uh, I sell probably about maybe half that on top of that. Um but we're doing, you know, 20 plus foot boardroom tables, five feet wide, like, you know, 60 gallons of epoxy a pop and craning them into fourth floor buildings and that kind of jazz. So uh, it, uh, it was organic, man. I didn't, I just took what I had. So I'd take custom mm-hmm. milling jobs with, uh, I got an LT40 wide. So I, you know, tow that around and just cut lumber. People would say, hey, I got logs in my backyard. We said, sure. They're like, so, yep, squirrel. Yep. Any, 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 any kind of oh money income yes please squirrel so, What's yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we did like anything we were uh, we were easily bought because uh desperation is uh you know uh pretty powerful the drive the drive and the hustle motivates you to make anything happen you know what i mean but it yeah. sounds like right now you're it's it's pretty simple thing right it's like you sell kiln dried lumber you make tables and you sell epoxy yep yeah. And, uh, like we are, I got, I don't know, six months booked, um, of, of projects. So you know. what, what kind, what kind of kept you focused? Are you, are you like a more, uh, do you have like a, like a simple non-complex mindset? Like you like simple things? Um, 
I guess I just have a plan in my head. Mm. Like I just, I know the do path. You, do you get bored or no, not really? Uh, I, I, my brain's always churning out something like it's always, but it's, something. but it's usually around the same ideas, right? Like how to improve, how to like, uh, me, like I, I got a business manager and that's one of the full-time guys is he does like almost all the office work, responds to all the emails, sends all the quotes, does all the line drawings for furniture and all that jazz. Uh, I mostly focus on sales and shop management. Um, okay and and do the work uh you know and, and i mill i'm the only guy that runs the mill at this point in time um but uh for me it's like i always got something that i'm thinking about so whether it's a new design for a desk or or um chairs that i want to make and produce and and have like i want to have four or five different our own chair designs so that when i sell a, a dining table i can sell 10 chairs with it you know yeah, exactly it's an upsell yeah yeah. yeah. So, so you, you did, but you basically answered my question. You are focused on better improving the work that you're doing now. And you're obsessed about growing the current business that you're doing right now. It's not like you're, you're, you're not thinking outside of that. Right. No, no, it's, it's pretty all, all consuming. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, at yeah. this point in time, I'm just at the point where I'm really trying to solidify my, um, uh, my my staff yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you're building a team you're building teams yeah yeah you're you're like you're transitioning from like hustler woodpreneur to leader woodpreneur building a team around you yeah yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and trying to give people defined roles that they're happy with and can excel at and and, and yeah you know uh good parameters on what i'm requiring of them and that kind of thing so for sure that's great man jacob that's awesome that's a great <laughs> place to be um what uh what does the future hold for you guys uh well right now uh working sun up to sundown to get products out the door that's my bottleneck is uh uh the slowest thing is is i can't get enough work done in a day so that's why i'm trying to hire some more guys and and go at it but uh the future for us is um it's it's good man like we got a strong local market now enough people know about us uh I'm not really hunting for work uh, at this point in time. Um, you know, if I get to the point where I'm down to maybe two months booked, then I'll start obsessing and maybe up some ad dollars and do that kind of stuff. But uh, I, I've got a buddy who's a big media guy and, and he's been pushing me for years to, to put out like video content on what we're doing and, and more informative and walk people through the steps of, you know, building the table or doing a river table or pour of this or that. And uh, he said, I'd be quite good at it, but uh, again, not enough hours in the day. So um, yeah. if I can get to a, a steady level uh, consistent and I can say, okay, I can, I have an hour a day that I can start producing some, some good content and, and, and putting it out online. Cause I'm, I don't like uh, half-assed stuff. It really yeah, yeah. bothers me. I think um, you've, you've mentioned that a couple of times. <laughs> okay. So I, I just, it doesn't, it, I mean, doesn't, I, I meant, I meant that in a good way. Like yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I think you're, you're pretty clear on, on who you are, which I, I tend to, I was going to post something on Instagram today. Cause I've been talking to a lot of people about like uh, self-awareness yeah. And knowing what you want, knowing who you are and having that translate into the type of business that you run and how you spend your time. Right. And yeah. what is actually important to you. And um, it seems like you, where, where did you get your self-awareness from? Jeez, man. I don't know. Uh, most likely my folks, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, mm -hmm. my dad, uh, it didn't take much guff, but, uh, you know, he, he'd, he'd always say stuff to me and, you know, the constant things come up and up and up. And when I was real young, he used to say, you're not being teachable, you know, you're not, you're not letting me, you know, import this to you. And so I'm a bit stubborn and, and hard headed, I think for sure. Um, but I also, I'll, well, this is maybe something you definitely have more experience in and can maybe give me some advice on, but uh, the reason we're called the Bearded Ox Timber Company is because I'm a bearded ox. 
And there was lots of other uh, real trendy names we could have came up with really like, you know, but it just felt so disingenuous. Uh, and I cannot do anything that I don't feel is authentic. Like it, uh, my skin crawls. So part of my reservation in doing more in the videoing and, and talking to people and putting content out is I don't want to come off like I'm selling something or know everything or, you know, am, am portraying this, you know, perfect lifestyle of making wood products, right? Like it's a hustle. It's a grind. And maybe that's just it. I just engage with the really terrible days as well. Like, mm -hmm. you know, hey guys, come, come check this couple thousand dollar bill I'm about to eat for fill in the blank, you know, like stuff like that. I think I could do that and do it in a way that I was satisfied in. You got any, yeah. you got any tips? Well, I mean, this is the part where I was, I was going to ask you, like, is, is there any, uh, is there any uh, sort of marketing or business questions that you do have that you want to think through? Cause maybe, maybe like, maybe we could reframe it in that context. Like, is it, how can you show up and be more authentic in, in your content creation? Like, I don't know, but like, tell, tell, you know, tell me what, what's, what's something that you need help with that I could help you out with. Yeah, I think, uh, like, I like, I, I really love people. That's okay. probably one of my greatest strengths is, is, is that I, um, I'm, I connect well with people. So, uh, if, if people come in the shop, I think we got an 85% plus close rate on them. Like, if they come in, they see a whole shop full of wood, a bunch of dudes throwing timber around and making stuff, they get on board. They love it. Uh, and so if I could translate somehow that, somehow just, I, I have a saying in our shop, and that's uh, don't tell me what you'd settle for, tell me what you want. Because if you're getting something custom made, it might as well be made custom. And so made for you. So if the dining table is two inches wider, say the V. I I made a, a table for a, a family really tall. The daughter was six one. So that dining table is two inches taller than standard, wow. right? I made one for a, a desk for this tiny lady and it's three inches shorter than standard because she had never had a desk that she felt like was comfortable for her. Uh, so if I could somehow portray those oh, things in, in content creation, then I think I'd be happy. Just that that's a that's a really interesting thing. I feel like um you know I kind of like so I just said this to somebody the other day. It's like the best part about social media is is also the worst part of social media is that you could be yourself. <laughs> right. It's sometimes yeah. you uh it it comes off a cringy is um but oftentimes too it's like it's uh you gotta you gotta change your mindset and look at like it that you're serving people right and you come from a position of service and so what you just said you know your whole entire story is about is about um how do you show up and serve people and so I love those examples of what you just said of how you are custom. I mean, that could be a particular segment, right? That could be a little video that could be um, a testimonial or something where you, where you talk to people about what their actual needs are. And, um, or at the very least, maybe like it's, you know, once a month, um, you know, once, once or twice a month, you invite everybody down to, to your shop and you film it and you create content for the month just for that. Mm -hmm. And you have people say, Hey, today's custom order day. If you ever were thinking about it, you get a discount and, um, and you know, in exchange for like filming and learning about everything and you just dis, and then you use that, that time to get the first intro and a deposit and you're talking through them. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you start documenting the build. How you can start documenting the build is by hiring somebody when you, because you know, you have your business manager, you know, when you're working on stuff, just to just have somebody walk through. It's like, oh, this customer does this. And it's almost like the bearded ox 
does the intake form and says, don't forget this client wants this. Mm. Right. And then you record that. And so like you can systematically um, crank out videos and projects and content and you become that, that, uh, that, you know, that custom person, you know what I mean? Um, It's, it's just, it's, I think again, for you, it's like, you have to be comfortable with knowing that you're a leader, you're, you're in a position of service, right? And, um, and you're doing stuff that nobody else can do. And you're also providing a product that's going to last people a lifetime. And it's so personal to them. And so probably another thing that I would do is like, how can you add a little bit more customization? How can you go a little bit above and beyond, right? How can you provide an, a, like a wow experience? Because they're going to get a wow, right? How can you add a, a, um, a little bit, a go above and beyond? So like you deliver a table. Yeah. They ask for the chairs. Maybe it's like a gift certificate to, to like a takeout place. You know what I mean? Like just for, you ever see those, do you ever see those, um, uh, those real estate shows where they're like, and you have this and you have the bathroom and you have this. Oh, and I have a little bit of a surprise for you. Yeah. And then it's like, pow. And you're like, Whoa, like, imagine how could you deliver that? Sure. Sure. No, that's a great idea. I always, I always considered ourselves, uh, yeah, the, the product or, you know, the thing that people are putting in their house to, for that final wow factor and yeah. then that's a good idea to, you know, give them us. It's the cherry and, on top. It's the yeah, cherry yeah. on top. A yeah. Couple, couple of, uh, you know, like a set of um, coasters or something made out of the same wood as their table or something like exact. that. Or charcuterie board. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like just something a little bit extra. But so like, again, I it would probably be, you know, the feedback would probably be invite people down and document that. Document the moments that matter to you and that better position you as a leader and that help brand you. So I love, I mean, you know, hopefully the world goes, it continues in this direction that we're going in and we can have in-person events, but I would host in-person events often design your showroom and have all of your amazing products. Be prepared to like book 12 months of, of jobs that particular day. Yeah document take pictures with people do the befores yeah. do the intake form have your people like wine and cheese it's an opportunity for you to extend your relationships with local businesses yeah document the build and then at the end add the cherry on top but yeah. document the whole entire experience because that that for you that's probably the only way that you would feel comfortable as opposed to being like, hey, 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 and then you like start being somebody that you don't want to be, and that yeah. you would like want to punch in the face because that's not you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, and I, I think like, I mean, we're constant. Like right now, I got a few. Is that helpful? It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, we're trying to. Um, I'm closing. Hopefully, knock on wood. Uh, you know, next week or two on a ten thousand square foot shop. Um, Sick. Uh, that's going to almost double my square footage, usable square footage. And uh, that, if, if I can have that, cause right now we are so like my showroom is uh, you know, it's maybe 30 by 20 feet or something like that. And then I got uh, offices and, and junk, but uh, if I could really have the space to walk people into, like I, we got with the inventory we have and the amount of equipment we have, and then the people we have and the projects we're working on at the same time, I am swimming in no room, you know? So, but that's, I love that idea. I like, I love having people in our shop. That's, that's it. Like, well, you just said it, you said, you said 85% close rate. Yeah. And like, if you just did, yeah. If, and it makes, you're probably, you're probably your most proudest then too. Right. Yeah. And, and, and people like, I think I, I like it because you can, you can see the wheels turning in their head. Eh? They, they go, 
they're walking in and, and I go to the guys because everyone's got noise canceling headphones in and all the machinery is going and I got a massive dust collector. So I go back there and I just, everyone kills it. They find something quiet to do. I walk the client back there. You know, we hand select the slabs for whatever they want to build or whatever it's going to be. Show them that, this, that. I walk them back into the office, you know, handshake, you know, Brandon, the business manager will send you all the stuff we've got. Well, now, over the course of the years, you learn. So we've got contracts and uh, all that kind of stuff that folks sign, right? Here it is. And, you know, limited warranty and blah, 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 all the stuff that protects you that I hate and would never do. If it was up to me, I would never do. It's just really not that great a business. It's fine when you're building a dining table for a family. It's not fine when you're uh, like renting two cranes in downtown to crane in a massive boardroom table, blah, blah, blah. If you get, if you drop that thing in place and they go, nah, no, thanks. We don't like it. Then I can like, thank goodness that's never happened, but it's happened on some small stuff. And if it happens on a big one, that's a, that's a pretty big hit of investment we've got. So to cover ourselves in that. Yeah. So. Great. All right. Well, I'm so happy that, uh, that I got a chance to talk to you. Um, I've never really, I'm trying to think if there's anybody else from Alberta I've ever talked to, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad, um, I got to connect you with one of, uh, one of my clients, um, to get lumber for you, but, uh, thank you so, so much, Jacob, for your time, um, and for sharing your story. Um, how can people follow you and get in touch? Yeah, we're on Facebook, uh, the Bearded Ox Timber Company. Uh, Instagram is Bearded Ox Timber. And thebeardedox.ca for you Americans. That's uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> strictly Canadian. Uh, but thebeardedox.ca, I think thebeardedox.com actually also redirects. So, But that's it. You can go on there, um, check us out, um, send us a message. It'd be great. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks, buddy. All right. See ya. Thanks so much for listening to the Woodpreneur Podcast, the number one podcast for the business and marketing side of the lumber, woodworking, hardwood, flooring, and sawmill industry. If you like what you heard, please give us a five-star rating and review. You can also tap into our community by visiting woodpreneurlife.com. Once again, that's woodpreneurlife.com.